He's said to be one of the brightest stars in England's midfield and he's certainly one of the most in-demand English footballers at the moment. But with muted moves to some of the biggest teams in the Premier League, which one would be the best for Declan Rice, Rice, baby? Hello, I'm Josh, the face at FM Base, bringing Wonder Kids to this place, and today we're looking at Declan Rice. No, 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 no. And as I said in the intro, he's considered one of England's best midfielders at the moment, and he's certainly in demand with links to some of the biggest teams in the Premier League, mainly looking at Manchester City, Chelsea, and Manchester United. It's still a big team, apparently. So to figure out which move's going to be the best one for him, we've jumped back into the FM-based cloning vat, and we've created another three Declan Rices. Rices? Rice? Another three Declan Rice. Another three Declan Rices. And we've put one Declan Rice in each of the teams that he's been linked with, and we're going to simulate five seasons so we can take a look which move exactly would be the best for him? And to figure out which move was the best, it's going to be a subjective measurement, so it's going to be determined on whatever I fancy at the time, but that is likely going to be things like appearances, goals, assists, any personal awards, and the awards that his team has won. Obviously, the more of each thing, the better the move. Now, let's take a look at the teams. Because there's no favouritism here at FM Base, except for Liverpool, we're going to go through in alphabetical order, starting with Chelsea. And the first Declan Rice, if we take a look here at his pre-season stats, he's made four starts and one substitute appearance. He's actually scored two goals, two assists, and a 7.2 average rating, so a really strong pre-season so far. Now, if we take a look at the tactics at the moment for their first game of the season, they're rocking out a 5-2-2-1, and Declan Rice is in the central midfield position here, alongside N'Golo Kante. He's slightly forward here, so I'm assuming he's in a more progressive role than N'Golo Kante is. But with other midfielders, such as Mason Mount, Kai Havertz, Jorginho Kovacic, is Declan Rice going to keep his position in this team? Is he going to remain in the team for the whole of the five seasons? There'll be one way to find out, but let's take a look at the next squad. So the next team is Manchester City, and this is three Declan. And if we take a look again at his pre-season stats, he's made five appearances. However, he hasn't had any goals or assists, and his average rating has only been a 6.84, so he hasn't performed as well as the other Declan Rice over at Chelsea. Now, I've jumped forward a little bit and jumped into the first game for Man City, which was the charity shield against Leicester, which incidentally, they lost 2-0. <coughs> But as you can see here, he did play in the centre of the park in their 4-3-3, alongside Kevin De Bruyne and Rodri. Taking a look over here, he had a 7.1 rating, so he actually had a better game than his midfield partners. Is that going to continue further on into the save? Again, there'll be only one way to find out, and you need to watch to the end of the video. But now... Let's take a look at those other guys. So if we take a look at the Declan Rice at Manchester United, he's made four starts in pre-season, no goals or assists, but a 7.12 average rating, so he's obviously performed quite well. But if we look at Manchester United's tactics, they're playing a 4-2-3-1, and Declan Rice is selected in the central midfield alongside Paul Pogba, slightly ahead of Pogba, which surprises me, because I would have thought Pogba would be the more progressive of the two. However, if we take a look at his average rating, he did manage to knock out a 7.1. And of course, for comparison, to allow FM to show us how they think his career is going to progress, I have left the original Declan Rice at West Ham. But as you can see, he actually only made two substitute appearances in pre-season, but he has started their first game with a 7.2 ranking. And if we take a look at the tactics, basically the same as Manchester United, a 4-2-3-1, with Rice in the central midfield position, but the slightly more advanced of the two. But how long will Rice stay at West Ham? Will he succeed at Chelsea? Will he succeed at Man City? And does anyone succeed at Manchester United? So with four Declan Rices in the Premier League, how will these men cohabit? It's a strange situation, but let's start the simulation. We're back five years into the future. It is now 2026. I'm actually nearly 41, and I can't seem to make it through the night without having to get up to pee at least three times. But that's not why you're here. Let's take a look at Declan Rice. So replicating how we did things at the start of the video, working in alphabetical order, if we take a look at Chelsea, one of the things you might notice straight away is that Declan Rice is still here, and he's considered a key player in the squad. If we take a look at the tactics, they're still playing a 4-3-3. Declan Rice is still in the same position 
position as he was before, and Golo Kante has dropped back here. But five years on, he's still in their first 11. Taking a look at him individually, his attributes, mental attributes, are absolutely fantastic as a sidebar. His technicals are fairly similar to as they were before, but at 27, he's looking very solid. And if we take a look at his career stats here, he's played pretty much consistently every single season. He's been scoring goals, he's had assists, man of the match awards and his average rating has not dropped below a 7.25 absolutely fantastic performances by Declan Rice let's take a look at his milestones so starting in 2021 his first season he was a European Super Cup winner he was named in the England seasonal best 11 he won the club world championship and he actually won the World Cup with England hey! he was actually named in the England seasonal best 11 every single year He's won the Carabao Cup as well and the European International League, which I think is the Nations League thing. So personally, a pretty impressive performance by Declan Rice at Chelsea. And jumping back to this screen, he's now up to 75 England caps and 6 goals. Let's take a look at Chelsea. But again, as you look here, there's no FA Cup, no Premier League wins and no Champions League wins. But I would still say he's had a very successful career at Chelsea. Next up is the other blue team. Now taking a look here, Declan Rice doesn't appear on this first screen, so he's not held in the same regard as the Declan Rice is at Chelsea. And in fact, looking at the player list, he's nowhere to be found. So I've jumped into the transfers, and as you'll see in season 23-24, this Declan Rice was actually sold to Barcelona for £51 million. And unsurprisingly, he's developed in exactly the same way as the other Declan Rice has, very strong mentally, but his technicals are not quite as good. There was a 17 in the other one, I can't remember where it is, and I'm not going to go back to find it. But again, looking very strong at 27. Now if we look at his career stats, he had an okay first season at Manchester City, 17 appearances, a goal, assists, man of the match awards, but a good average rating. Second season, played a little bit more, he had a 1-1-1, but a 6.93, not a fantastic season. However, that was enough to gain him his move to Barcelona, and since he's been at Barcelona, he's been pretty solid. He's played a lot of their games, he's scored a couple of goals, assists, Man of the Match awards, but some really good average ratings. And if we take a look at the Barcelona tactics, Declan Rice has been playing in the central midfield here alongside Gavi in a slightly more progressive position. And if we take a look at his career milestones, this Declan Rice seems to have won quite a few awards. The same as the other Declan Rice, he's won the England seasonal best 11 almost every season. But he won the Premier League while he was at Manchester City, and of course he won the World Cup, because so did the other guy. And he won the Charity Shield, but I don't count that. Carabao Cup, and he won the FA Cup. Then he was purchased by Barcelona. Since being at Barcelona, he's won the Spanish Cup, he won the International League, same as the other guy with England. He's won the Spanish Cup again, Spanish Super Cup and the Spanish Division. Pretty difficult to compare to the guy from Chelsea. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to rank these. So in comparison to the Declan Rice at Chelsea, I mean this guy does play for Barcelona now, which you could consider a bigger team. He's won the Division, he's won the Spanish Cup a couple of times, he did win the Premier League and the FA Cup, so perhaps marginally above the other guy. Now if we move over to Manchester United, you'll notice the eagle-eyed among you that Declan Rice is actually vice-captain of Manchester United, so obviously still here. Let's take a look at his career. But first of all, attributes-wise, his mentality again is absolutely fantastic, and these technicals a little bit better than the other guy. But obviously he remained at Manchester United. He's played a good number of games every single season. He's scored goals. He's had assists, man of the match awards. His average rating hasn't dropped below a 7.12 and it's actually averaged out at 7.29. So some really good performances there. Let's take a look at his milestones. So in his first season, he was actually England player of the year. And of course he won the World Cup. Was this midfield just full of Declan Rice? Named in the England seasonal best 11 and he won the European International League. However, there's been no cup wins here for Manchester United, so perhaps this puts him a little bit behind the other guys. But of course, there is another Declan Rice, so let's take a look at the template for this save, the original, over at West Ham. Well, now I'm at West Ham, and I can't find him anywhere. Where did he go? Now if we jump into the transfers in the second season of this save, you'll see Declan Rice here, 
has been sold to PSG for £80 million. So here he is at 27 years old at what I'm assuming are the champions of French football unless something remarkable has happened. So if we take a look at the career stats here, I think we picked up in the 21-22 season. He made 28 starts for West Ham United. He scored a goal, assists and some Man of the Match awards. A good 7.22 average rate in there. But that gained him the £80 million move over to PSG, where he's made a good number of appearances every season. He scored not as many as in the other teams, but he's had an awful lot of assists, especially in these last three seasons. It's a man of the match of the awards, but look at that. 7.63, 7.63, 7.58, and a 7.51 overall in this career. This has been a very good, high-performing Declan Rice. So looking at his career milestones, the fact that he has a World Cup win here as well indicates to me that every Declan Rice has played for England in this save. And once he moved to PSG, he actually won the Euro Cup. Which, granted, might not be the Champions League, but hey, it's a European trophy. And as the other ones, he was in the England seasonal best 11. But over here, you'll see he actually won the Club World Championship. And this guy actually won World Player of the Year third place and was third place in the World Golden Ball. And if we take a look at this screen, because I haven't loaded up the French League, you'll notice that PSG have indeed won the league every single year. So this Declan Rice also has some titles to his name. But if we check out the tactics, first of all, Wow, what a PSG team with Donnarumma, Hakimi, Nacio, Rice, Wijnaldum, Karim Adiemi, Leon Bailey and Haaland. Absolutely fantastic. But Declan Rice has been playing in this defensive midfield position, which I think makes the amount of assists that he's had even more impressive. Now, I'll be honest with you. I know I'm supposed to say which move was the best, which move was the worst, but I just can't judge it. All these Declan Rices have performed so well. They've won trophies, they've won a World Cup, they're scoring goals and making assists, they're having million, million pound moves. I just don't know what to do. It's too hard, it's too hard. Count me out, I'm going, I'm going, I'm off. Hello? Yeah. Are you watching me? Look, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. How do I know he's performed the best? He, he might not have won as much as Chelsea, but he's like one of their key players. He's playing all the time. He's performing well. Well, yeah, no, I know he hasn't won as much as Manchester United, but again, he's playing all the time. He's he's scoring goals and assists. His, his average rating is fantastic. I know, he went to Barcelona... Like, no, went to PSG, won all them titles at PSG. How am I meant to judge that? Well, <sighs> fine. Let's try and take a look. So I suppose I'm going to have to rank them. I'm sorry, but I think for me, the Manchester United move is the worst one. Now, before you abuse me in the comment section, let me tell you why. If we look at the career status, average rating has been a 7.29. Now, that is only fractionally above the lowest rating, which is a 7.24. So he's not been the best in regards to his personal performance. And if we take a look at the career milestones, he's not done anything that has set him apart from the others here. This is probably the worst in regards to trophies and personal awards for his career. So because of that, I'm going to have to put the Manchester United move as the worst, but he still played really well and he's the vice captain. However, 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 decisions made, second from worst, average rating, and he's just not won anything different to the other guys. Now his third best move, or the one up from the bottom, is the Chelsea move. Now again, it's a very confusing one because he is considered a key player, but let me just give you my reasoning. His average match rating is a 7.31, so he is one of the better performers, and he's played consistently and he's scored goals and assists. So this puts him above Manchester United. Now in regards to cup wins, he did have the European Super Cup, the Carabao Cup, the Club World Championship, but that's about it, and how highly do you really rank the Carabao Cup? So his average rating puts him above Manchester United, and also he's won more trophies here. So for me, that puts Chelsea in third position. Now the next two are pretty difficult to place, but bear with me, and I think I know what I'm doing. 
I'm going to put the second best move is to stay at West Ham. Now, as counterproductive as that might be, there is some semblance of logic to this. And obviously, in regards to wage, is 275k a week, which is the second highest contract. His average rating is a 7.51, which I think is the best over all of them. Certainly better than Manchester United and Chelsea. And even though he's played less games, less goals, his assists are pumped right up. And his average rating since moving to PSG has been fantastic. And if we take a look at his trophies here, he's won the Euro Cup, he's won the Club World Championship, he's won the awards with England as well. However, this Declan Rice was will play with the year third place and the third place in the World Golden Ball, which puts him above the other guys. And also PSG has won the league every season since he's been there. So he's got league titles, some European trophies, and on an international level, individually, he's actually performed better than all the other Declan Rices. But he's playing in France, so that puts him in second place because I think the edge has to go to the Declan Rice, now of Barcelona, formerly Manchester City. Now, first of all, his contract here is £300,000 a week. Yippee! But ironically, if you take a look, his average rating is actually the lowest of all the average ratings, the 7.24. However, he's played a steady amount of games and he's been very consistent in his goals and assists and Man of the Match awards. But he has managed to secure a move from Manchester City to Barcelona. So Man City and Barcelona clubs, you can argue, have a similar status with Barcelona perhaps slightly bigger. However, let's take a look at the real separator his milestones so if we take a look here he won the premier league with manchester city and was in the best 11 he won the community shield and the same he won the world cup england won the world cup he won the carabao cup but he also won the fa cup that season and he won the charity shield again where he was then purchased by barcelona so even though he's not won the personal awards that the declan rice over at psg did this guy has won bigger awards arguably at a bigger club having won the Premier League with Man City and the Spanish First Division with Barcelona. He's won the Carabao Cup, he's won the FA Cup, the Spanish Cup, the Spanish Super Cup. So I would argue in regards to his career and his achievements and his trophies that he can put in his trophy cabinet at home at the end of the night, Barcelona has probably ended up being the best move, which means the original best move was to Manchester City. Well, hot dog, that was hard work. A real difficult decision to have to make to tear those moves in. But I think we ended in the right decision that the best move for Declan Rice, should he get the option, would be to go to Manchester City. But regardless, one thing I can tell you is Declan Rice is one hell of a player. And if you can sign him on your football manager save, definitely do it. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have then, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to show your love for FM Base. And any comments or feedback, please put it in the comment section down below as it helps drive the content here and helps us produce more of what you want to see. But if you'd like to connect with me directly, you can find me at FMFO Official on Twitter or on Twitch. But remember, this is the place. It's FM Base. I'll see you next time.